hopefully we can make find ways to make both a little bit more time for social activities in our next release party, as well as maybe trying to find a way to live stream it a little more easily. However, we are going to go ahead and pick up with our basically our last two sessions for the day. Um, we'll have really our, our last main talk is from uh, Noel, who's going to be. I think I, I think I'm saying that right. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Noel? It's it's Noel, but that's okay. <laughs> Common right. mistake. Well, Noel Noel's here to talk about Universal Blue and some of the downstream stuff that's happening there with Bazite and Bluefin. So, Noel, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you, and you can uh, take us away for our last full talk of the release party. Well, we pull your well, thank you up. very much. <laughs> All right, over to you. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, appreciate you joining us on a uh, Saturday morning, at least for me, maybe for the European folks, it's more like the evening, but appreciate everybody here. So, um, yeah. This is the Universal Blue Talk. So a little bit about me. Um, I am the project manager and one of the core contributors at Universal Blue. Um, for my day job, I work at Red Hat. Um, I love spending time with my family and my pets outside of doing all the technology stuff that I do. And I am a big metalhead. So, so what is Universal Blue? Um, so we build custom Fedora Atomic images, which Timothy talked about earlier, um, based on OCI Docker-based containers. Um, this feature is not officially in Fedora, so um, we are working to try to, um, along with the Bootsy initiative, be able to have this be a more official portion of Fedora. Um, we exist and became what we are because we wanted to test and validate the model. Um, we publish base images and tooling um, for custom images. And the main images that we publish that are what we call our downstream or opinionated images are Bazite, Bluefin, Aurora, and Ucore. So this slide is talking about our layered image architecture and how our Git repos are designed. Um, so everything basically that we build comes from our main repo, which is minimal changes, um, to upstream, uh, atomic images. Um, so basically these provide quality of life, um, hardware support specifically, um, and um, other things that basically, like I said, are very minimal changes that, um, you're able to build on as a base. And then um, we have a config repo, which we copy into our main images, which include configuration files, UDEV rules, automatic updates, um, and a tool that we call UJUST, which uses a, um, uh, a tool upstream called Just, which um, is a task runner, kind of similar to make, but um, a lot simpler to use. Um, and we utilize it for setting things up. Um, and then we have our HWE repo, which is um, basically specialized hardware support. So think like Surface laptops, um, framework specific tweaks, um, kernel modules, and NVIDIA drivers are another thing that we publish. And then everything comes downstream to the Bazite and Bluefin and um, Ucore and Aurora projects. So that's how it all kind of flows in the model for us. So this is a graph basically talking about how we have grown. Um, so as you can see, uh, the amount of polls, it doesn't necessarily indicate how many users we have, but it's basically how many polls we've had on our um, registry, on our container registry for all of our images, including main, Bazite, and all the downstreams. This is kind of what our contributor you know, stats look like. Um, we do everything on GitHub um, through GitHub Actions. We build all of our changes there, all of our images there. We even use um, an action that builds ISOs there as well. So um, this is kind of how active we are. Um, we are quite a busy project these days. So 
Um, this is what our contributor distribution looks like. Thank you to opensauce.pizza for providing this information. It's just a good look at, you know, basically within the last 30 days, how are we doing? How many contributors, you know, have been helping with the project? And it's a very, truly a very community initiative, you know, with the amount of um, contributors that we have, both inside and, you know, as core contributors and then outside the project as the community. So I'm going to kind of section this out into three sections. Hopefully I'll be able to go through the slides fairly quickly, um, uh, you know, to have some time for questions. But section one, what has changed for us? A lot has changed. Um, so Bluefin, um, as Timothy had pointed out, we appreciate the shout out from you um, from the Atomic uh, talk. Um, Bluefin is officially GA. so. Uh, no longer considered beta anymore. Um, we build two streams for Bluefin. We have GTS, which is our Grand Touring Support Edition, kind of a play on LTS, um, and that is based on 39. So um, we try to hold things back a little bit to have a little bit, you know, more stability and that sort of thing, um, and uh, just more time to bake in the oven. Um, so um, that's based on 39. You can get the latest image, which is based on 40, which is uh, one of the major changes for this release and why we're all here. Um, Bazite 3.0 released, um, which means everywhere you can get Bazite now. Um, you have KDE 6, um, and all of the changes that we get in the Atomic upstream are all provided to us. Um, and um, for folks that are not familiar, Bluefin is um, basically our standard um, uh, desktop that we provide that's based on GNOME and um, kind of gives an easy um, on-ramp to, to using the Linux desktop. And then we also have a DX version of Bluefin as well, which is focused on developer experience. And then Bazite is our gaming-focused um, image which provides tweaks and um, special changes to make it work well on handhelds as well as desktops. Think of it in a sense like SteamOS for your desktop. So, and then Aurora is in beta now, um, which is the KDE version of Bluefin. We got a lot of feedback um, from folks that they're like, hey, I want to have KDE. I don't blame him. I love KDE too. So we um, were very fortunate to have Nicholas um, be able to drive that initiative to have Aurora be built out of the Bluefin repo now. So you are able to get either KDE through Aurora or GNOME through Bluefin. Um, another big change is we have a lot more users now. Um, when I joined the Discord, it was um, it was quite a bit smaller, and, and now we we have just grown exponentially it's been crazy so um it's been a great time great time for us um and then the last thing is which is very exciting for us is bazette and bluefin are now listed as community supported options on the frameworks website so you get a framework you are able to install bluefin or bazite and it works out of the box not any changes anything like that all of it is in our main Bluefin and Bazite um, images. So all those changes that are needed for framework, there's no special image required, anything like that. It's all just built in. So, so other major changes, uh, we now have fully offline installation ISOs, which is very exciting for us. Um, that is a big change. Um, everything is built entirely in GitHub CI. Um, we have, like I said, it's fully offline. Um, Flat packs um, from FlatHub are also included, which is our default repo that we pull everything from for installation of packages. Um, and uh, we are very fortunate to have Jason who um, built this action for us and to be able to get things working. So very exciting times. Um, another big thing that has changed is that we have homebrew support now um, inside of our Bluefin, Aurora, and Bazite images. Um, so no configuration is needed. Um, homebrew is just out of the box available. 
it's an excellent on-ramp for folks who are familiar with Mac OS and are used to having their developer tools uh, done through Brew. And we feel that it increases the availability of apps um, for developers. And we are always wanting to provide what developers need, you know, in our images. So um, uses OCI for distribution, SIG store, which is nice for signing, and um, the SLSA level two work is incoming. And they're a great companion to flat packs, which is primarily what we recommend users to use for installing software on the atomic desktops. Tixis is another killer feature um, that we implemented. Um, it is a new terminal. Um, it's uh, repo is completely open source. Its repos are in the GNOME project. Um, it has built-in support for DistroBox and Toolbox containers, which are um, hugely, hugely beneficial on the atomic desktops um, and especially for developer workflows. Um, we support, they also support quadlets, which is super cool. So you can see what's going on um, with your quadlet containers. You can just go in there and um, everything is up and running. Um, you have the ability to change terminal settings based on the container you're in. So um, it's very, very cool. As you can see in the picture um, next to it, uh, we've got a Ubuntu toolbox. We have a Fedora toolbox and a Bluefin, just a standard Bluefin terminal, all running at the same time with different coloring. So it makes it very obvious if you're in a container or not, which some days for me can be a little bit crazy. So, <laughs> so and then um, again, you can set default profiles to select for containers. So um, in my case, um, in my custom image that I built, um, I'm able to basically have a specific profile that will enter a distro box automatically. So if I want to test out some stuff in Fedora proper, I can just fire up a distro box and do what I need to do. Um, so another feature we added is a terminal message of the day. Um, such a killer feature. Like uh, it's funny with that this has never been there before um, or other distros haven't thought of this, but it just provides a great introduction to the OS, especially if you're a power user or developer to get a feel for what's going on and to get access to more documentation. So it provides an introduction to UJust, which is a tool that we have on our desktops that basically are shell scripts for all intents and purposes that the community has decided like, hey, um, I just want to set something up. So you just type you just, and then you can see all of the different commands that are available. Um, and the MOTD provides tips, um, and these are random every time you open. So you'll learn something new every time you open your terminal. And if you're annoyed by it, you can just turn it off. So. <laughs> Um, another thing that we've been working on, which everybody in the industry is working on, is generative AI. Um, and our focus is to try to bring AI tools that are local, um, that, you know, don't require you to talk to the internet to do things. Um, you know, obviously you can do that if you would like to set that up, but, um, we have UJust commands for Olama, Olama web, um, for large language models, um, you can uh, start these services after you just type in you just Olama with systemd, so it's all controlled through quadlets. And then um, a native integration with Alpaca, which is a flat pack that you can install, as you can see on the right, um, allows you to ask questions to the Llama model. So it's very cool. We have narrowed the scope of what our project is doing. Um, so one thing that um, we ended up doing was um, we had custom image tooling um, that uh, basically became beyond the scope of our project. So they are successfully able to split off into the Blue Build project. 
Um, so we still, you know, um, it provides, uh, if you're not familiar with container files, it provides a way in which to use YAML to be able to define how you want to build your container images inside of GitHub. So it provides a potential easier on-ramp if you're not familiar with the container style. Otherwise, we have our container template, which we provide to users, which already has the workflow to get started. So um, in the image template repo. Um, we're definitely trying to encourage community projects. So one of them is Secure Blue, um, which has a little bit more locked down security settings um, that uh, basically were kind of out of scope for us. You know, we try with our main images to try to stay as close as possible to upstream if we can, with just a few tweaks here or there to make things a bit easier. Um, so that is a really great project. And then Atomic Studio is another project that um, is being worked on, which is trying to help with creatives. So, and again, it was a bit out of scope for us. Um, so uh, we're trying to test new features in our downstreams first before pushing them into main. Um, and the reason for that is because um, it is a lot easier to iterate in the downstream first and then be able to push upstream if we think that this is something that can be shared effort. So because Bazite and Bluefin and Aurora for all intents and purposes are separate projects unified under one banner. Um, and we're trying to slow down the main and the base images. Uh, we want to try to, like I said, stay close to upstream and try to push you know, the changes that we think make sense into the upstream so there's less that we have to do. So um, another thing we're doing is cleaning up tech debt. So we simplified our container files, we simplified our build processes, and um, we are building less images now, which in my opinion, makes the whole project a lot easier to uh, handle, so. So I'm gonna move on to the section two. I wanted to showcase some of the community um, and the things that they are doing because uh, our community is everything and they are just doing such cool stuff. So I really wanted to show that off. So this is an example from Doug. Um, he, I'm not sure if it's Bluefin, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but uh, basically, as you can see, it's highly customized his desktop. And it just, some of the showcases of stuff is just gorgeous. So um, this is an example of trying to get more of like a Ubuntu sort of look. Um, so this was customizing GNOME um, and this is on our Bazite image for gaming. So got to give credit to Kid, that looks very, very cool. So this is an example of someone who is using um, the new cosmic um image it looks like um but also or maybe cosmic on bluefin it could be a fork i'm not 100 percent sure but we do have a cosmic image which ryan who spoke yesterday is actually helping um helping us move forward on so once cosmic gets you know more into a beta state or a full release then we'll be able to potentially include cosmic as one of our main images alongside everything else this is kyle's desktop which looks just gorgeous man like the gnome settings in bazite are just great so i just really wanted to showcase the the work that the GNOME team is doing because Bazite provides both KDE and GNOME images. This is an example of Crush's desktop. He's got universal blue stuff everywhere. He's got Bazite, looks like on a handheld there. He's got Aurora on a couple laptops. He's got Bazite, looks like on his main desktop. So yeah, we, we've got some very passionate people in our community that just use our stuff everywhere. This is Hikari Knight's desktop. Um, I I don't even know where to start. This is a lot. <laughs> it's like a Bazite, you know, Bazite fiesta going on here. So um, very, very cool. Um, you know, he described to me all of the different ways in which that he's running Bazite when it's like in a VM on his direct desktop, on his Legion Go uh he's got steam os going on on his you know on his handheld just a just a crazy but very cool setup 
So, and then this here is an example of, I went to a Ansible meetup. Um, and one of the things that we decided to do was to have a, um, a game night kind of at the theater after the meetup. So we have, um, basically a box, a small um, HTPC setup that we set up with the projector. Um, and uh, just a just a really cool setup. It's it's basically like having Steam OS except on a console. So shout out to Minis Forum. They've got some really cool stuff going on um, that make this a lot easier. So now we're going to look into the future. Um, and so one of the big things that we're looking at, um, along with Fedora as well, is official Bootsy OCI images. So I've got links there, the initiative, as we talked about earlier in the release party, this is something that's really, really exciting for us. We you know, definitely see the future of this model being in Bootsy um, and are fully on board and willing to you know, do whatever we can to help out with that. Um, we have both, we're wanting to have both x86, 64, and ARM images. Um, so ARM images are still very much a work in progress. Um, you know, we definitely want to do that. Um, it's, it's definitely on the list, but there's a lot of other stuff upstream that we need to work on first to be able to get to that point. Um, we wanna see container signing um, be a regular thing. Um, and then the last one is uh, ZSTD chunked images, which will make our updates a lot faster um, because it's pulling down, instead of pulling down the entire image and then doing a diff through that, it's actually pulling down only the changes that are required. We want to improve the out of the box experience. Um, you know, we definitely want to work with Upstream Anaconda wherever we can to improve um, some things. Um, a few examples I have here are scaling problems on handhelds during the installation process. We would love to see if we can figure out getting an on screen keyboard in the Anaconda installer. It would be so unbelievably helpful for us to be able to um, have someone be able to literally plug in a USB to your Steam Deck or um, Legion Go and then basically be able to do the installation completely from your handheld rather than um, uh, having to uh, basically plug into a dock and then do all the other fun things. Progress indicators for installation, which we've already talked with upstream boot C and RPM OS tree, and those should hopefully be landing soon, which will make our um, update process a lot more intuitive for users. Um, we want to design tooling that better introduces users to the operating system. So right now we're doing a rewrite of our tool called Yafti. Um, which will hopefully give a better out of the box experience. And then we want to continue to provide good documentation both on the desktop as well as in our um, forums and uh, central documentation. So we definitely want to work with upstream more. Um, you know, Bazite currently right now is using a custom kernel and I would love to see us be able to upstream those changes into mainline Fedora in a perfect world, it'd be super awesome to just use the Fedora kernel. And even better, people could just install Fedora, like stock Fedora if they want on a Steam Deck and no changes, customizations are required. That'd be super awesome. Um, we wanna provide uh, more hardware support. Um, so Steam Deck OLED for Bazite is currently still um, basically not supported yet. We're hoping to be able to change that soon. Um, the Apple M series Max would be super awesome to be able to run Bluefin or other custom images on. And we would love to be able to work with Fira Labs as well with the Chromebook work that they're doing to be able to get our images to run on Chromebooks. Um, which Owen, if you saw him yesterday, he actually showed us that it can be done. It's hard, but it can be done. So, and then the last one is System D systems extensions, which, um, will allow us to be able to install or layer software without having to reboot your PC. Um, so if you do an RPM OS tree local layer, um, it will force you to have to reboot into the new image because it's layering software in there. So hopefully systemd systems extensions allow us to be able to do that live and simplify installation of software. 
and also all of the changes through DNF um, and Bootsy, we're hoping to be able to potentially do it there too. So we've got lots of options. And I just, uh, that's the end. I really want to thank everybody in the Universal Blue team, as well as everyone in our community. And it's just been such an awesome release this year. I'm really excited. We have a lot of really cool things coming. And I especially want to thank the Fedora Project for having us and providing all of the upstream that we rely on. We would not exist without you. So um, we are very happy to be part of this community. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy to forge on to the future. So that's the end of my talk. Awesome. Thanks for the great overview on Universal Blue. I know we are close to the end of the time. I know we started a little bit late, so we can go a little bit late. I think we can probably do two questions here. I think this one can't, this one is the most upvoted so far. I think it'll be a good, uh, re actually a really good question for Q&A. Uh, this is coming from Sandro Penguin P. What's a compelling argument to switch to atomic or immutable versions of the desktop coming from a regular repo backed desktop? Yeah, so I that is a very great question. Um, I think one of the best benefits that you have with moving to the atomic model is um, I am not afraid of updating my desktop anymore. Um, because of the way the atomic model works, um, if you, let's say there's a change that is made and um, you potentially have a broken system when you update, you are very easily able to roll back. Um, it's built into how the atomic system works. So that's one huge benefit is that I do not have to worry about updating my PC. I think the other nice thing too is that things are just slower when it comes to how things change. You know, most of what people do these days are in their applications and not so much on their desktop. So I think that's like one of the hugest benefits that I see for, for folks is basically... Um, the expectation that there's less concerns between a standard Fedora. That it makes it simpler for people who are not good at computers, you know, or not technology people, you know, is to be able to use a system, be like, I update it, like I update my phone. Oh, something broke. Oh, cool. I have the ability to roll back. So that's one of the biggest benefits that I see for sure. Yeah, that's that's the thing that tempts me often with the atomic images. I've, I've got it on my list to play around with them a little bit more. Uh, we might have room for two more. Let's see what we can get through. Uh, next upvoted question. Uh, is the rumor true that developers from a particular video game company that makes a product that sounds like cream sometimes participate in Bazite development? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, potentially. <laughs> yeah, we we definitely um, work with um, upstream as much as possible, um, and there there is definitely folks um, from that community that um, will drop in and and help out with things for sure. Nice, that's awesome. Uh, the rest of the questions all have the same upvote, so I will. Uh pick one off here. This one looks like it'll be good. Can you explain the reasoning for referring to Bluefin and Bazite as custom images of Fedora atomic desktops? Yeah, so the reason why we don't call ourselves a distro is because we're literally layering changes on top of a of an image. So to call ourselves a distro doesn't really make a lot of sense when we're pretty much just Fedora with customizations on top of it. That are like, granted, we are changing the kernel, and there's a lot of things that people could argue and say, oh, like Bazite is a distro because of this. Or sometimes people talk about our images as being a distro because that's kind of been the nomenclature. But we're really trying to get away from that because the reality is, is that we are just tooling that builds, you know, changes and things on top of Fedora as a solid base. So that's why we kind of refer to our stuff as downstream images and not downstream distros because we're, it just kind of, we're not, you know? So, yeah. All right. 
Well, there are definitely, there are still questions coming in on the thread. So do take a look back into the matrix thread. There's probably like three or four more questions I think that we didn't get through. Um, so you're welcome to go and follow up on those, but thanks again for the overview and presentation on Universal Blue and what's new and interesting in that space. And also thanks for coming out and doing it on a Saturday too. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thanks so much.